If you want to cut metal on a saw stop, you have to turn off the safety system. Or just wear gloves, right? False. In my last shorts video, I showed how you can test if aluminum T-Track will set off the break in your saw stop before you actually make the cut. Wow, did you guys like that video because it got tons of views and comments, so thank you so much for that. There were some common criticisms and myths that we needed to address, and make sure you stay till the end where we troll some trolls. In the video, I showed that with the saw powered on but the blade turned off, you can test whether the brake would be engaged or not by touching the blade with a finger or a hot dog, etc. And when I touch the bare metal end of the T-Track to the blade, you can see the blinking red light, which means yes, the brake would be engaged if you tried to cut this T-Track on this saw. An overwhelming majority of the comments all said one thing, just wear gloves. Wearing gloves while cutting metal at a saw stop will not prevent the brake from being triggered. Not only is that recommendation flat out wrong, it's also extremely dangerous, but more on that in a second. I think most people understand that the saw stop safety feature works by detecting when a conductive material touches the blade. Conductive means it conducts electricity. Things like human beings, hot dogs, and metal all conduct electricity. The original video even shows that the T-Track is painted, it's, it's powder coated, and I was touching that painted surface to the blade and you could see the blinking red light was not coming on. So that should show right there that the painted surface is already acting like a glove. And it wasn't until I touched the bare metal end to the blade where we saw the blinking red light, meaning, yes, the brake would be engaged if we cut this T-Track. That painted surface is acting like a glove. So I don't know why people think that if I were to wear a glove while cutting this T-Track, it would not set off the braking system. So wearing a glove should be no different. Still not convinced? Okay, we'll try some gloves. These work gloves. These work gloves, gardening gloves, vinyl gloves, latex gloves, OJ glove, Michael Jackson glove. Okay, I know someone's gonna say it has nothing to do with me touching the, the T-Track. It has to do because the T-Track is touching the cast iron table and it's being grounded or something like that. All right, let's test that as well. So here you go. I've got these rubberized landscaping gloves on. And as you can see, I'm touching the saw blade and moving it back and forth, and the red blinking light is not coming on. I am fully isolated from the system. And now I'm gonna pick up the T-Track and not let it touch the cast iron tabletop and touch it to the blade. Yes, sure enough, the blinking red light comes on. So hopefully this is enough to prove that wearing gloves while cutting metal on a saw stop will not stop the brake from being triggered. Now are you convinced? Okay, remember I mentioned that wearing gloves around power tools is extremely dangerous? Let's talk about this for a second. I was shocked at how many people recommended wearing gloves at a table saw. I guess people just don't realize how dangerous that can be. So here's the issue. Never wear gloves with power tools. The reason is that if the spinning blade catches the glove, it can pull you further into the machine. And that will make a really bad day turn into an absolutely disastrous day. Don't do it. Even if your table saw is a saw stop, that doesn't give you license to do something stupid. My car has any lock brakes, seat belts, and airbags. But it doesn't mean I go around driving reckless just because it has these extra features. And I certainly don't try and figure out how to turn those features off. And forget table saws for a minute. This goes for any big tool in the shop. Drill press, lathe, jointer, planer, router, Everything has the opportunity to grab that glove and pull you further into the machine. It's just bad practice. Don't do it. <laughs> Let's talk about latex for a second. Now, some people recommended to use latex gloves because they recognize wearing regular gloves is super dangerous at the table saw. They figured that latex being so thin, if you did come in contact with the blade, it would sever it so quickly and then reach your skin, engage the brake, and it would be really no different than not wearing gloves at all. I like the thought process, it makes sense. However, we've already proved that wearing latex gloves and cutting metal, it's just not gonna work. It's still gonna set off the brake. Some people also said that looks like my saw blade is a rip blade, and that's a really bad idea to use a rip blade to cut metal. Yes, that is absolutely true. The reason I had the rip blade on there is because there's more distance between the teeth. It's got fewer teeth on it. And photographically, it just looked better on camera 
to show the T-Track up next to the rip blade, it's much easier to see the T-Track touching an individual tooth when there's a lot less teeth on that blade. But yes, when cutting metal, you should always use a blade with a high tooth count. And speaking of the right tool for the job, the very last thing I said in the video was just use something else like a handsaw. And a lot of people gave lots of great recommendations. Yes, a bandsaw or a cutoff wheel or even a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade in it. There are so many ways to cut T-Track that are not at the table saw. And I highly recommend a far less dangerous option than even using the table saw to begin with. All right, let's check out a few more comments. You also can't cut polycarbonate without turning off the safety. I haven't heard that. That may be true. I don't know, I've never tested it, so. That's interesting, thank you for the tip. Just make a wooden crosscut sled, put the aluminum on it and make the cut. Now, it's the same as the glove thing. It's, it's, it's not what's holding the T-Track, it's the aluminum itself. Use electrical tape where you hold it. Face palm emoji. No, same thing. No, you can't cut aluminum, but you can cut aluminum. Cheers, mate. My friend Jack at Everyman Builds, he had a great comment. Your advice is good advice. Not everything needs to be cut at the table saw. Hot dogs included. You're onto something, Jack. This guy looks like Haircut Harry. He is pretty handsome. And now for some trolls. Just when you thought you have seen every sponsored content video on this saw stop, here's another. I'm not sponsored. I wish I was. People say you can't do this really specific thing on this other totally specific thing, and who cares? Well, you did, because you commented. Too long, didn't watch, no. It's a short, it was less than 60 seconds. But you did comment, so that's cool. Such a joke. Maybe of people had common sense, they wouldn't need this. This is all to prevent morons from losing fingers when they should be paying or using a handsaw in the first place. I think that's exactly what I said in the video. I was taught and trained properly growing up how to use tools properly, so thankfully I didn't have to buy a $5,000 sign table saw. I didn't spend $5,000 signs on this either, it was way less. President Barack Obama says D. R. I've been in the industry as a joiner for 20 years. This is one of the top five stupidest things I've seen. If the blade doesn't get you, the shooting aluminum from the blade will. I wonder what the other four stupidest things are. I asked him, he didn't respond. I've been using these for years with no safety crap on it. Still have my fingers, just pay attention. People who need this are the same people who bite their fingers when eating chips. I got nothing on this one. Thanks for watching everybody, see you on the next one.